I'm David Orr. I'm a member of Squadron 1 and Squadron 2, all long, easy builders. Um, we're visiting the Hole in the Wall today and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about cows. The Hole in the Wall is in, at Santa Monica Field. Uh, it's been described as a somewhat ideal location to build airplanes because uh, essentially we have five airplanes in progress. We can look at each other's airplanes, get help when we need to. Uh, outside, it's January 7th, outside it's uh, about 75 degrees in the evening. Uh, with a wind chill factor, it may come down to about 72, and uh, basically it's a perfect place to build airplanes. It's even better so because we are located next door to Experimental Aviation, run by Ron, uh, Dave Ronneberg and his associates, uh, and Experimental Aviation builds cowls. They build a number of other parts uh, for the aircraft, and uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, introduce Dave Ronneberg to talk about cows. Uh, we really should be considering cows not just where the chapter talks about it, which is engine installation, but from the beginning of the, the shaping of the profile of the aircraft. In other words, the nose and the canopy, particularly the canopy, because you want the canopy to flow into the cow. And uh, basically, uh, you should probably be considering cow much earlier than the plans in, uh, in the Rutan's plans show. So uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and introduce Dave Ronneberg. Uh, if you find this tape and you don't know where to send it or, uh, and you need the address, the uh, Experimental Aviation is at 3021 Airport Boulevard, Suite 201, Santa Monica, California, 90405. And the phone number here is 213-397-4110. Dave, now. Someone said there was an officer out here that needed to <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm wondering why we call this the home wall. This is Dave Ronneberg, Experimental Aviation, Santa Monica. Why don't we discuss cows and sources, Dave? Um, I know that the official source right now is Lombards, as far as Rutan is concerned. I don't know if um, aircraft spruce is also an official source of cows. Well, they seem to have come back into it uh, since Bert uh, changed, had a change of venue. But they are... That's with Taz. Yeah, task okay. research is now producing cows again, and they're, I believe, still producing them in polyester resin, and they're offering them in Kevlar, which with polyester resin is a total waste of time. Okay. Um, Lombards is using uh, molds. Uh, are, they, are they the original molds that were that task was using? Yeah, same cow. And where was what was the source of the, the molds that they uh, made? Task made. They were on con They were contracted by Rutan Air Factory to uh, to make the molds and produce the cows. And after, um, uh, I don't remember exactly what the gyrations were, but there was a breach of contract and Burke pulled the molds. And Task Research stopped producing parts. And Larry Lombard, uh, as in the last four or five months, picked up the ball and started producing the parts from those molds. Okay, other than Task, Lombards, Aircraft Spruce, we don't know where Aircraft Spruce, spruce gets their molds. Task right? Research. They are still getting it from Task? Uh, that may have changed, though, with the interim. I'm not sure All right. whether the task is producing okay. the first or not. There's you with the experimental aviation here, and there's a sports flight in Florida making cows. Uh, I don't know of any other sources. Do you? That's five. That is it. All right. Now, as to what type of molds, I understand that you and sports flight make NACA, and that you and all of the other manufacturers, in other words, Task, Lombards, and aircraft spruce, wherever they get theirs from, are making the scoop. Is That's that right? correct, but we're the only company that produces a NACA um, lower cowl, as well as a Ram Air lower cowl. And we also produce the NACA scoop itself. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and uh, move around and look at some of the cows and talk about their various properties and, uh, and what, uh, how the NACA and the, and the scoop differ in requirements and, and the materials made in each of these manufacturers. We don't happen to have with us a task research cow in its original configuration, and we can call that, for all its purposes, the first generation cowling. It okay. was polyester resin and fiberglass with a gel coat sprayed into the mold, over the mold bases, whatever they were used, and they were able to produce four or five, maybe more parts than that per day. That's one of the reasons that they used polyester resin. Unfortunately, because of the number of parts that got out per day, the resins were relatively green. The top cows all seemed to fit well. And the four or five of that particular types of cows that I've installed, the lower cow was nearly impossible 
to install without making major modifications to the cowl. Pie slices out of the cowl, um, heating the cowl in some cases with, a, with a, an acetylene torch to soften the structures. Uh, and you had to have, you had to use Burt's system, which was wooden blocks and Bondo to sufficiently hold the cowl in place while you attach tapes. Okay. What do you mean by the first generation cowl? So well, it was design is concerned. It was the cowl that was generated from Burt's first conceived ideas. Right. And what what did that take? Well, how did that take shape? I don't see one here. Obviously, we don't have one, unfortunately. Um, basically, from what I remember, uh, Burt's original design essentially cuts in here and then goes up over a big hump. It's very abrupt. It comes up higher. This intersection here is, is steeper. This is steeper. I would say just by looking at it that, that the first generation cowl produced more drag than, right. than let's say, for instance, this cowl is concerned. This is a essentially a third generation cowl. All right. And we'll show you, let me show you what, what, what other characteristics. There was something about the exhaust pipes come out in a different place on the second generation and third generation, right? On the first generation cowl, the, the exhaust pipes came out of the, um, but this area here had not been modified, it had been consistent. There would have been a hole cut here, and the exhaust pipe exits diagonally. All right. And who still manufactures it? Lombard still does the first generation cow? Yes. And it's based on the task molds. I believe it's also, I believe now that it's laid up in epoxies okay. and, and, and standard bid cloths. Well, that's good. I understand that was one of the things Bird didn't like about task recently. I, I heard that he heard that and uh, didn't yeah. like the, uh, the material they were using. Now, Task also uses the original first generation cow, and I presume that Aircraft Spruce is buying from one of them a, a first generation cow. This is essentially the, basically, uh, a second generation here. I bought this one from Sport Flight, as I recall, um, when it was up in, what, Kentucky? Tennessee? Tennessee. 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 And uh, basically, this has the Sports Flight type exhaust system, and is much more smooth. As I recall, Sports Flight said, uh, that he would that, that they would get about five or ten miles an hour faster speeds because of the smoothness of the cow compared to the somewhat choppy first generation cow. I couldn't verify that from our testing, but I, can, I I know one thing for sure is that the the cowl fits the airplane very very well. Mm -hmm. It was designed to handle all of the engines that that unsupported or otherwise can be placed in a long easy mm -hmm. 35 L2C, O290 D2s or ground power units as well as the O320s. This will handle all the cowls. Does the first generation the, not do that? First generation, uh, the first engine I installed in a Long Easy was an O320 D3G in a standard task research cowl, which uh, was a limited edition carbon cowl. And it fit inside the, the, that cowl without any mod modifications whatsoever. Okay. All right, so we're talking, this is second generation. This is the one I bought from Sports Flight uh, some time ago. Um, Tell me about the materials that you can get first from Task, Lombards. You've mentioned Lombards already as having epoxy and resin, which is superior. They may supply cowl and Kevlar. I do not know for sure that they do or do not. All right, what's the advantage to Kevlar? Well, as far as dimensional stability is concerned, I don't think there is any advantage in Kevlar in the cowl as a whole. I do believe that there would be a definite advantage to placing a ply of Kevlar for screw loads around the perimeter of the cowl. Okay, that's so that the bolts hold and the, the, the right. attachments hold? Mm -hmm. The only thing that you absolutely must have in a cowl is dimensional stability. And uh, it doesn't have to be absolutely rigid to, to do the job that it's intended to do. It must be strong enough so it doesn't balloon beyond the, the cowlings, or along the, beyond the baffle edges. And it, uh, it shouldn't balloon sufficiently to, to uh, cause a dangerous situation where, where it's so close to to uh, failure as to worry about coming apart and going through your, your propeller. Okay. We, this cowling, Herb Sanders cowl, is two ply of bit cloth inside and outside with a layer of Kevlar in between. It's a very strong cowl. It um, weighs almost exactly what ours does. It's $100 more expensive than ours. Well, that's uh, because of the Kevlar. He also makes a non-Kevlar, doesn't he? Right, right. All right. Very, very well made cowl, nothing wrong with it, unless you want to pay $75 for shipping. We don't ship by the United States out of California. If you want to call from us, you have to buy it here. All right. Uh, what? Um, let me explain something about our cow. All right. This is a what we'll call for the sake of kind of reference a third generation cow. It's three plies of bit, and 
It has in it a molded oil door, which you do not get with the Herb Sanders. The door itself is molded. Uh, the person that made this laid out this door themselves and they put a ply of carbon in it. That's why it's black. That's not necessary. Three plies, four plies of bid is all that's necessary. It, it's, the door itself is molded to match the depression that's molded into the surface of the cowl. Um, why three plies of bid rather than two or four or whatever? I didn't believe, um, after talking to them, and after having worked extensively with Kevlar, that the Kevlar was going to provide that much dimensional stability. And so I, I built a set of cowls with three plies of bid and went out and tested them. And we dove tested the aircraft to 230 miles per hour without the forward screw line around the perimeter and had absolutely no problem with the cowl. Sounds like a rather risky business. Well, we, we did it in increments, and there were no changes. Um, what other differences are there between this third generation and the second generation cowl, basically? Just the, the oil door, and there were a number of persons that liked the lines of a Ram Air. So we made a, a secondary plug that we were able to take a lower cowl, having cut off the nacoduct portion, placing the cowl in the mold, and laid up the ram air section. Right. You can see the bond line along the side. And uh, you surface this in when you put your, your ram air scoop in place. But essentially it fits the aircraft the same way that an aqueduct does. Okay. Um, have you, have you have available any kind of Kevlar or any other kind of material here at uh, Experimental Aviation if people want that kind of thing? I prefer that they, that they purchase it and handle it if they want to keep the cost down. I don't need to make money on the on the purchase of the materials. I don't like handling the material. It's very difficult to cut. You have to have a special pair of shears to handle it, and you've got to keep sharpening them every time you use it. And if someone wants Kevlar and a cowl, I'm going to do everything I can to talk them out of it, unless they want it around the perimeter for screw loads of cam lock loads. And then I'll, I'd be willing to put that in there for them, and only one ply would be necessary. As it is, when we make up the cowl, we add two extra plies of bid cloth around the perimeter four screw and cam lock loads, and it seems to have been sufficient. Right. Now, if I want a scoop set of cowls, like, essentially with this, what parts do I get all together? Uh, I get the top, obviously, the bottom, and uh, what, the scoop the lip? Scoop, the scoop you have to purchase from, from whoever makes it now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I haven't made a part for that. Does the aircraft spruce supply that? Oh, yes, they do. Okay. And the, uh, as far as the uh, NACA, what do you have to buy? You have to buy the top and bottom, and uh, yeah, I mean, the NACA molded section itself, which is here. I, I put one in mine. This is essentially from a mold. One thing we should point out now is that this, this method differs from the suggested method done by the folks in Florida. I can't remember their names, but they were the ones that did the boat tail cowling. They had you put a cardboard dam in place that establishes the perimeter of the, of the NACA. Theirs is 3 inches deep and 12 inches wide. Uh, a lot of persons didn't have successful success with that. Uh, couldn't get their engines to cool. I, for one, had that problem. But as soon as I cut that NACA section out of my airplane and replaced it with the Herb Sanders style 15 inch wide by 4 inch deep, 3 and inch deep NACA, my temperatures came way down. Things worked out very nicely. All right. So you've got essentially the smooth, smooth third generation uh, cows available in both NACA and Scoop. Tell us about which, what's the choice. Why do you want scoop? Why do you want, uh, I mean, it's obviously it's look. Some people don't like the, the, the NACA. Some people don't like the look of the scoop. Um, what, other than the choice of look, what are, the, what are the differences? I used to argue temperatures. I felt that the ram air was a very positive way of cooling the airplane. Uh, by and large, I, it was more because of the fact that I had unsuccessfully installed an NACA duct and got very poor results from it. After installing Mr. Sanders' NACA duct, the, uh, the performance, the cooling performance was excellent. It was far, far, far more than I expected. And proved to be, uh, again, from limited experience, to be a better method than the ram air. I, I feel, personally, that the ram air is more than sufficient to cool right from 0235s right through the 0320 series engines. Um, but at a drag penalty of about four knots. Maybe more than that. I, mean, I, uh, I haven't been able to test that accurately. There's all information that is available at this point. The NACA does produce less drag, and I think it cools a little better than the Ram Air does. It does require more work to install. You have to I can attest to that. I've been probing and 
I'm getting ready to glass now the outside of the fuselage after having essentially another bottom inside the airplane. Cut. How long it takes to even build the NACA, which I'm building right now, uh, or the scoop, can you tell me uh, what's the relative building time for NACA or scoop? Can we talk through what actually is entailed in installing a ram air. Uh, we could cut to another airplane in here and show what we have versus what we have here. Okay, let me do that. Okay, cut. Is a pedo scoop, ram air scoop, standard that was uh, designed by Bird a number of years ago, and has worked fairly well. So this one's made of of uh, epoxy, and before it can be installed, a fairing has to be built over this area on the aircraft. Uh, is this a standard uh, scoop airplane? Is this what it's going to be? That's correct, David. With this um, this covering here will have one ply of bid on the inside and two plies a bit on the outside. Do you do that from the outside or the inside? <laughs> <laughs> All depends on who you're talking to. <laughs> this one's going to be done from, from the, uh, after the fairing is done. Bert's technique originally was to install the pedo scoop onto the lower cowl. And then when you slid the cowl on, it slid across the bottom. You had a rubber, rubber fairing around the bottom. But a number of persons have noted that in flight, at about 180 miles per hour. This begins to pull away from the bottom of the aircraft. So what I've been doing is installing this scoop onto the fairing that runs from the pie wall to the belly of the aircraft. And then attaching a four-ply tape here and sliding the cowl into it with screws, two or three or four screws around the perimeter of the of this. So this becomes permanently attached to the aircraft. Well, that's certainly simpler than the NACA that I'm building. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, especially in light of the fact that, that when I install this, after this fairing is done, the lower cowl is in place, I match this up to the lower cowl, having sanded the area in preparation for attachment, and then I attach it from the exterior with two plies of bid. After it solidifies, I pop the cowl free, and I tape it from the back side with one ply of bid. That's again to the belly, to the surface area here. Then I put the cowl back on, uh, use drops of super glue to match the, 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 the cowl and the scoop together, sanding the, uh, let's see, sanding the scoop on the inside, having done that already, in preparation for a four-ply tape. And we get on the inside and we put silver tape on the cowl. I reach through here and put a four-ply tape that's pre-laid up on, on aluminum foil, attaching it to the scoop itself. After it solidifies, I drill it for Clecos and then eventually it gets camel, drilled out to number 10 and, and, cam, and uh, nut plates are placed on the inside surface. Okay, so what, what, what the difference is between this and the NACA is that you, you lose a little bit of, of air speed, you have an easier construction. Much easier. And uh, you have perhaps different aerodynamic cap capability, cooling capability, uh, and you have to work with that particular thing later on. Too. I don't, I would, I, at this particular point, I think that the, the NACA gives you better cooling and, in, and interrupts the flow of air into the propeller less than the pedo scoop does. Okay, now if you were supplying one or the other to a person, which one would be the cheaper if they have to buy this the scoop? Which is This would be cheaper. Okay, so the scoop is cheaper. And if they had to pay someone else to install, it would be um, hundreds and hundreds of dollars cheaper to install. The time to install this is, I would say, 10% of installing a NACA. Alright, fine. Why don't we uh, talk a little bit about the construction technique on the NACA as well, and uh, uh, go on from there. Got to switch to another airplane. Is at what point in the construction of your aircraft do you consider the installation of your cowlings? So you don't wait until the plans, essentially until the chapter 22, to decide whether NACA or scoop. Yeah, if you want to, if you want the most out of your installation, structure-wise, the least amount of work expended to get what you want, that is quite correct. This is, this is a. This would be too late if you're going to go with a Herb Sanders style cowl to consider whether or not you're going to go with one or the other if you want to expend the least amount of effort. The, the time to decide is, is uh, at the point you're carving the exterior of your fuselage. If you intend to go with a Herb Sanders style NACA duct, um, you buy the NACA duct and place it on the belly of the aircraft, the aft end touching the firewall at this point here, and the forward end touching just aft of the landing brake. And carve away the foam on the belly. You'll find that, that, that about the point in time when you, when you hit glass, the interior glass of, 
will be about where you want to go depth wise. <clears throat> there should be no spring in it, it should fit perfectly flush, and then you glass right over the depression. These edges are relatively soft curved so that the glass will go under. This is a tension ply as far as the person is concerned in the back seat. So you and essentially build two bottoms. Yes, you do. You, you do the original glass configuration uh, on the belly that you would have in a normal layout. Wouldn't it be lighter just to forget the glass from here to here, put your NACA in, fill your foam up, and then just glass the outside? It would be, but I am, I am not an engineer, and I would like to know that the, the, uh, the glass configuration that was there originally is still there, because the NACA duct is only two plies, and if you look at the loads in this area, I, I'm concerned about possibly landing in a field, carrying the gear out, and the person, the only thing between the ground and that person is a NACA duct, and the area, I don't, I don't really know, really know if it would carry it would prevent damage to the person inside the aircraft. I like this glass being in there and the NACA duct on top of it. And we'd hate to survive a crash with a rock up your uh, bottom. Yes. Mm -hmm. and we, All right. Uh, um, what, uh, what other considerations? If you, if you haven't decided on NACA at this stage, can you put in a NACA later? Yes, you can. You can cut through, uh, but you've increased your workload. All right. And you'd want to bevel off and, and, and reproduce the glass that you had in here. I did that on my airplane because the fuselage is urethane. And with, without that glass in there, I, I markedly reduced the strength of my airplane. Come on down there. Why don't we talk about the ideal time to buy cowls? I mean, you can buy the NACA duct if you decide on a NACA duct. When should you really have the cowls on hand? Well, if you want to go task research cowls, this NACA duct can be made to fit the task research cowl. So that's not really a consideration. But if you, um, let's roll this thing up flat and, and we'll talk about some of those considerations you can give me. planes in the shop. I mean, in other words, one of the earliest stages of building in the shop. Uh, is this the stage where it's best to get the cowl? Not absolutely. But this is, this is a, a good point to make a, a consideration. All right. And when a, a, lot of, a lot of the builders, when they've completed their air, aircraft, ends up, end up with a chevron where the turtle deck meets the cowling. You mean, essentially, when the canopy comes down, it comes like this, and then... Or the other way around. Or even a, a bulge. Right. Okay. Even in one of the nicest airplanes built, the, uh, Mr. Cardell's, they ended up with a chevron there. And the plans led them into this. It was, there's almost no way they could avoid it with the information they had. They're, they have a canopy, they have a process, and they're told they have a cowl. And when the two are assembled, um, there isn't enough information beforehand to know where your surface is going to project. If you've chosen your cowling, and if you're uh, for a moment, that you have built your canopy as per plan. And, you'll, and looking right now, you can see that the top of the firewall sticks above the cowling. This one has had, a, I had the added two tenths of an inch from the original plans added to the firewall. If you had built everything up to this particular stage, you'd be locked into possibly raising your cowl here to match and then having to do a fill situation here, it wouldn't be too bad. But we can avoid this condition. We can work all of the things that, that control the position of the cowl to the canopy and the position of the cowl to the engine. We control all of them. They are all variables until you lock them in. So what, what, start, you're, what you're saying then is you, you start this process of hanging a cowl back when the canopy is being built. Right, and actually before the canopy is being built. What we want to establish first as we've reached this point, the spar is installed, we notch in, we put in our extrusions, we mount our engine mount, preferably get an old engine block. You can buy them from National Aircraft Salvage Damage, to, I think they'll probably give them to you to carry off the lot. Bolt it in place, get a cardboard tube that loosely matches the, the journals, stick that cardboard tube into the engine, and having established, first of all, the thrust line that is suggested in the book, and centering it down at the center line. You can use the center line of the crankshaft that splits, and with a plumb bob and your eye, line up that crankcase down the center of the fuselage. With this cardboard tube in place, use something else that, that resembles the diameter of your spinner. Slide it onto the end of the cardboard tube in its position. Then you take the cowl, you place it on top of the spar here, and match it up to the, to the back of the firewall, and then get the gap that you want, 
above and below. You may need the hands of others to help you hold the bottom cowl in so that you can see the opening is actually very much larger than the spinner. And you want to get this thing pleasingly around the spinner. This, this allows you to work the, the cowling around the, the engine compartment. What's the usual gap between the spinner and the cowl? An inch? Half an inch? Two, two inches? What sort of gap is with a, typical? With a dynafocal, uh, the engine is much more lively on the mount than it is on a conical. You want three-eighths to a half inch, no less than three-eighths of an inch. Right. On a conical, you can go as close as a quarter of an inch. Now, does the different makers of cowls differ as far as that gap is concerned? In other words, is it, I understand that this, this type, the, the second and third generation, are longer cowls. They are. They're eight inches longer than the standard cowl and can be trimmed for an eight inch, or for a six inch, or for a three inch extension. But you use that three-eighths to, to half-inch right. gap. I might add, though, at this stage, that this cowl's optimum look and angle is at the eight-inch extension. They've all been installed thus far with six-inch extensions and uh, look good that way, but would probably look best with the eight-inch extensions because it is a cone coming down, and it is a smaller opening with an eight-inch using the full length of glass extended. Uh, okay, let's say we've established the position of the spinner out here. We know where that is. And you know what gap you're going to have. Right. So we take, the, we take the cowl, place it in place, and this is the, the, the point when you're going to start working your canopy. Because you can tie in the canopy to the turtle deck, Tom. That's another variable that, that can be considered, is that the, the canopies are all different shapes. And we can raise the front or, or raise the back and move them around to, to get the most favorable uh, projected line from the cowling into the canopy shape. Um, you, you, you don't have to be a victim of, of, a, of a process that pushes you into an unfavorable cowling sh um, projecting into the canopy. So basically you're talking about the profile of the aircraft. Right, exactly. Does it help aerodynamically? Anytime you can smooth out the transitions from one surface to another, you're going to help an aircraft aerodynamically. You, you want to go for that anytime you can. All right, so the first time to think about cowls, other than this NACA idea about building it when you're doing the, the outside of the fuselage, is essentially before you start the canopy. Now, if you don't, is it a big problem ha hanging the cow smoothly? Well, not really, but you're gonna, there's going to be a penalty to pay somewhere. As an example, Stan Sutterman's airplane. Could you hold the back of this show and I'll illustrate something from, from the back end of this jersey. Okay, okay, push in. There. Now, Stan's one, one uh, a local uh, fly in essentially for best built aircraft. Uh, his, he has a nice looking airplane. One of the things that he had a, a, a canopy that was free blown, much larger than standard. He's not a small guy. He wanted a little, he wanted a little more shoulder room, a little more headroom. He, he might have been a little claustrophobic, I don't really know. What we did, there was no way we could match his cowls to his engine and to the firewall and to that particular canopy. It was twofold. The descending line was too se se severe. So what we did was we played tricks of the eyes. We projected this shape out onto the turtle deck, out to here. And the, the, the predominant line is the opaque one, which is the turtle deck, painted white. And the less predominant line is the clear one, which is the canopy itself. So what we did is we allowed the canopy to come down into the turtle deck. But the turtle deck is what we kept straight faring nicely into the canopy. So we played little tricks here, and it doesn't look bad at all. So if you if you have an unfavorable line here, which is, is you cheat with it with the with the turtle deck, and then do what you have to do with your cow. All right. So if you've already built the canopy and it does what you're showing there, you might be able to play with the turtle deck. If you've done that already, if you've built your canopy, you've already built your turtle deck, and you've locked yourself in. All right. So you might be able to fill turtle deck. That's about all you could do. Yeah. That's heavy. That's heavy. All right. We're going to talk a bit about here is the preparation of, uh, in this particular case, an aircraft that already has a turtle deck. Well, that's a nice thing about the hole in the wall. You can create turtle decks and canopies in just a few seconds. Very quick. Someone else is there. So what we're going to do is, um, as you can see, this isn't a bad transition. We don't have the engine in place and the spinner. We're not, so we're not absolutely sure that this is going to work. But if we did, We've established this height. Now this is going to come down just a hair here so that this surface is flush. David, can you grab the other side? Sure. All right, now we're sitting on top there. 
this surface is flush with the spar here. And the back of the cowl, if the, at the, out, the attitude above the spinner is correct, if it was correct right now, we would have discovered that this needs to be trimmed to come up against the firewall. And we're a little low, but with a little fill, it would work out just fine. So we would trim the cowl if necessary. We would sand the perimeter up about an inch and a half or so, all the way around from the spar up onto the turtle deck, up to the opposite side, and down the other side of the spar. And then from the underside, I would take blocks of wood and bond them to the cowl and to the spar. Here and here, and one up at the top, and then the other side. These cowls fit very, very well to the aircraft without much pushing and pulling to get to the match. And that contrasts with task. I've seen you struggle with task cowls. Mm. The top one's okay, but the bottom one's harder. Our bottom top one's always easy. The bottom one has, has been a bear. Um, very difficult to install. All right, so at this stage, we're going to lay up four plies of glass on aluminum foil, cut them into strips sufficiently wide to lap onto the spar and onto the depression that will have been silver taped for release on the cowl, and lay up those tapes around the perimeter. Do you do this before you put wings on or after wings on? Preferably with wings in place. The wings would be on. The exterior of the cowl, the outboard end of the cowl, would have been trimmed to match the end of the inboard end of the wing exactly. And again, drops of super glue to match the butt ends of these two sections meeting each other. And after this has been glassed, this area would have already been prepared for bonding. There would have been silver tape on the cowl on the underside and the undersurface of the wing and board end sanded in about an inch and a half and those four plies laid up underneath to match. So now we've established the entire perimeter of the cowl for insulation. Right. Some people don't have room for two wings. Um, can it be done one wing at a time? Um, or should they just do it outside in there? If they can do it two wings at a time, that's, that is absolutely optimal. All right. Before, before we leave preparation, what do you have to do to prepare the wing? Even before putting it on or, or at that time, do you have to do anything for that? First thing to do, sand the end of the wing absolutely straight. You don't want to match the cowl to a crooked end of the wing. Sand it straight. Sand the underside and at the same time sand the bottom side of that inside opening for bonding. All right. And how about the leading edge of the wing is it for, for filling in, in, to the spar? Is that something else that's going to be? Oh, in this area? Well, you can do gap seals at the same time. You would sand in preparation for gap seal and for surfacing in that area. If yeah, it's not absolutely necessary, but it could be done at that time. The, uh, once this is done, one of the reasons that you've got an engine in place, a spinner in place, is that you can, you can shim at the back side to get the height you want and get the final position you want. This section is relatively flexible, so it will match. If, if you do have to match one side at a time, there's probably enough flexibility in, in the cowls to get one side to match and then get the other side to match. One of the things that you would do after you've sanded that, the end of that wing is when you install this wing on the aircraft, it has to be installed as per final configuration. All of those shim washers in place, the one thin washer on all three positions, and then the washers necessary for incidents installed at that time, as per final. So the wings have to be as you're going to fly them before you even install the cowl. That's correct. All right. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the construction uh, procedures as to just the, the schedule of layups, taping, and, and silver tape, and so forth, right from the beginning. You've got a bare firewall. In fact, right, let's start with a bare firewall. Um, what do you do first, exactly? Well, the first thing that we do, we, well, we have the engine in place, obviously. Yeah. Um, we'll sand this down, out about an inch and a half, all the way around. The ends of the wings have been sanded. They've been sanded straight. Do you sand in here, too? We might as well because we're going to have to lay up a one-ply glass tape from the surface to the underside of the tab to keep it from peeling. Okay, and that's a flux, a flux, a small flux joint, too, joint right? in the very corner, and that one ply will run from here to here. Not necessary in this area. You wouldn't be able to peel this curved area up at all. Uh, and uh, if they've already got the firewall on, they would not be able to bond in that area anyway. And you talked about gap seals. Does that mean you should do the gap seals at the same time? Wouldn't have to, but at, by the time you've reached that stage, if you're in this condition, that would be an excellent time to put the gaps on. All right. What were you going to say, Tom? Um, what we can do. We're
a little a little bit midstream. This um, this cell has already been outfitted with attached tabs on either end of the wing and the entire perimeter, as per our last conversation. The underside below has been prepped for tapes here, sanding here for the peel ply of tape, which you might be able to see here below, from underneath and lapping up under here. This has been prepared. This will require a little more sanding in this area and in this area here. This is identical. All the work necessary here is identical to the work that was necessary on the upper side. When preparing a cowling, we talked about before, one of the first things you want to do is sand the ends of the wings absolutely straight, both sides. Then you're going to position the cowl, get it straight, get it centered, again using your engine and your, and your spinner, and then mark from underneath with a scribe where the wing meets the cowling. Remove the cowl, trim off the ends of the wings, sand, and match it in place. Again, refit the cowl. The final configuration will look like this. glass hardened, before we remove the cowl from position, we establish position for the cam locks and for the nut plates. Drill all the holes out to number 30 for an eighth inch cut for an eighth inch Coleco. How much uh, glass do you use to put that wing to uh, attach the wing to the uh, cowl? There are four plies during the first layout. That's bid. bid. Of course, on the 45. On the 45, cut the five sticks. The cowl fits very, very well. Uh, it was designed to fit very well. The, uh, after the four plies have been laid up and all the holes are drilled, the cowl's been released, then the end of the wing here is beveled off at about 45 degrees so the tape will lay from the upper surface down across the, the diagonal and out onto the surface. This prevents this tab from peeling from underneath of the wing. And we'll call it a peel strip for all intents and purposes. That the ply is laid up after it hardens. You then get the back drill again, check the fit of the cowl, and we go in position. Now those holes you're going to use again. Oh yes, well, these will all be drilled out from eighth inch to just below a half an inch for cam locks. Where do you put the holes? I mean, you could put 20 holes on there. What, what, That's what's true. Your choice? Well, I've placed as many as five and as few as three. Four seems to be the best. And that'll depend on the, the shape of your cowl, the shape of your wing. You'll be able to tell while it's in position what seems to lay down and what doesn't. Um, the four seems to be about the best. We, these are placed, uh, the first one about three and a half inches from the spar, and the first one from this end also about three and a half inches from the end of the wing, and placed about mid-tab so that you have enough purchase around each hole for the cam lock stud as well as the cup. At this point, we're absolutely sure that the cowl is going to fit. All, right. All the holes match up. We'll put clicos in every other hole, and then we'll drill these holes out, mass drill all these holes out to this, this, their final sizes. These to number, to number 11, just um, for a 1032 screw. It's funny, 1032 seems to have been used by everybody. I've installed them with the 832s, and I know that they're sufficiently strong enough. The 832s would be fine. So a K1000-8 and, and a number 20 hole would be what you'd build for this if you're going with an 832 screw, a number 11 hole if you're going to go with a 1032 screw, and a K1000-3. Okay. There's something we've skipped. You cut the cowl off at the end of the wing, it would just fall down. What do you, how do you keep it up there when you're making your layups? Well, the, when the, the cowl is positioned, after you've cut it, have somebody hold it on this end, and because of the of the the matchup that you get, the favorable matchup, you can get it to stay in place with just drops of super glue between the end of the wing and the end of the cowl, and as needed. You can actually see the the remnants here of some of the super glue right there, right in here, right in here. What and kind? What's what brand of super glue is worth? worth we getting use um, this material right here. It's called CA plus Zappagat. Where do you buy that? I buy it at hobby shops. 
very strong material. The, uh, the lower cowl has been trimmed already for this airplane, and this material is used to accelerate the, the reaction between the glue and the surfaces when we spray it on. It goes. What we're going to do is we're going to show you how the, the bottom cowl mates to the upper cowl. How many, how, how many Clicos are worth having on this kind of thing, Dave? 30? Oh, great. 30 or 40? You lose them. It might be an asset for a local club to get together and buy, rather than buying them all individually. What are, what are 30 Clicos worth? Probably $20. You can buy them in surplus. Okay, so we've installed the top cow with Clicos. Bottom cowl. Would you please get that, Dave? Sure. Eric is installing a ram air cowl. And unlike the, the, uh, the plans, the plans call out taking the upper and lower cowl, putting them on the floor, trailing edge matching, and laying up glass tabs between the two. These cowls fit so well that is unnecessary. We take them, match them to the underside. We get several pairs of hands available, and we tack these edges in place with super glue. Tom, would you hold the other side? And David, would you get underneath and hold the forward edge? Now, super glue these edges in place. All we've done, we've uh, commandeered two friends to hold the cowl in place while I match up the trailing edges. I might add here at this point that I have already taken the top cowl and sanded this edge perfectly straight. Taken the bottom cowl, mashed it up from below, scribed it from the inside to match, and sanded it to match. I didn't sand much material off of either one, but just enough to make sure that the two match. Now what I'll do is I'll take my vice grips and I'll clamp the trailing edges together. That holds this fairly firmly. Now I'll clamp this one over here. Get it matched in place. Let it go, guys. Just going cable loose on this side. Okay. I'll get that back here in just a second. Once we, once we get this clamped in place, hold it up here, Tom. And I'll super glue it. The interior has already been sanded in preparation for bonding. We're going to bond the four ply tab to the lower cowl, which means that when we do the drilling, we'll be drilling up here. If we did it in the opposite manner and attach the glass to the top cowl, the tab would be hanging down in this area and the cam locks would end up behind the exhaust pipes. We wouldn't be able to put the cam locks in place. So we're going to make a, an intelligent decision here and not paint ourselves into a corner. Okay, now, the wonders of super glue. As Dick Rutan once said, you can't imagine how he builds a long easy without super glue. And I I'd hate to think about having to do it without it myself. It's really an amazing material. This stuff got quite a smell to it, too. And especially when it's kicking. Or We're going to accelerate it. Or sanding. <laughs> or sanding. Yeah. It really irritates your eyes. And we don't want to take pressure off of it yet because it'll, it'll pop on us if we do. That inside can pop on us. We don't mind. We've used tongue depressors in here before to help with the bonding operation. But I'd like to illustrate here at this point just how strong it is without even tongue depressors. And it's, it has a hell of a gap filling quality to it as well. Now when I read the plans, they say you do this out on the floor. Yes, this area. But this cowl is not like the other cowls. It's very different. What's the advantage of doing it on the plane? Well, it seems to be more accurate. You can, you can tell what it's doing. The, the plans expects you to believe that the cowls matching one another are going to match the airplane. And I have never found that to be the case. With this cowl, it probably would. But it would be a more complex situation for, you to, for me to match them um, as a pair than it is separately. I know that I can get away with it with this particular cowl. I can't with the other. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come up in here. We've already 
We've got this little tab in place. See how close this fits? Get super glue on the end. Get super glue in the gap. We'll kick it. I'm going to go over to the other side here for a second and help Tom hold his in place. And we'll get a little bit of the tip. And we'll spread that on in there. Well, they see how you're going to do it. Why don't we go ahead and do that all the way around and then come back on camera? Let me get a little more here. Of course, I want this one. Yeah, but how about for you? I have your name somewhere, but I can't raise you. I have Claire Walters. 390? 1082? 1082? Hi. 390? No, they're not. About 10 minutes ago, we, uh, we cut from installing the cowls. And uh, we have since tacked it in place with super glue and in a few strategic places, some tongue depressors. Now, after this is done, or before this is done, the inside of that, that, of that wing and those cowls were prepped with silver tape and, have, and already having been, been, been sanded um, in preparation for the four ply glass tabs that, that will be installed. Now, where the, where the tongue depressors are on the exterior at this point, they'll go onto the interior with the tongue depressor. Uh, I'm sorry, in this area, we have tongue depressor on the exterior holding in place because the glass is installed on the interior. Right now you'll see a tongue depressor here on the exterior. Just before installing the glass, I'll go on the interior and bond a small block of wood in place that will hold this up where it's supposed to be to keep this relationship correct. Can you use super glue for that too? Yeah. Yeah, there isn't much tension on these cowls and it's, that's what allows us to use the super glue. After uh, the glassing of the cowls, uh, we'll, we'll do exactly the same process that we did on the top side with the, the peel tab that goes on the edge. Okay, and four plies a bit, mm -hmm. 45 degree angle. Right. The tab about three inches wide, about an inch and a half out onto the cowl, and about an inch and a half onto the inside of the wing. Okay. So this is essentially what you do up to the finishing process then. And, and Correct. Now ready to sand and finish mm -hmm. the cowl. Do you one, need, thing, one thing uh, that Eric has done is that he's going to install his cowls before this bottom fairing is in place and before this is in place. And he'll lay up his glass tabs from here to here. And it will go one full ply all the way to the edge of this depression. And then he'll step the three other plies back a quarter of an inch. So that when he gets ready to install this tab to here, the um, which will tie into the tab that goes onto the, the duct. He won't have a heavy, thick layup in one spot. And he'll step the plies. Yeah, he'll step them. Um, How about what, what you do for uh, enhanced cooling? How do you tu tune things here? I mean, how do you, wh how do you orient the, the, the knack of mount, so to speak? I mean, the, the scoop mount. Is it just flat with a fuselage, or is it built the right way, or how do you get... How do you tune the thing? This surface ties into this surface with a fair curve. Can you, you use trim this to place it? Or to do place you it before adding the, the attached tabs, yes, you can use super glue. Is it best to do that whole thing with the plane upside down? It could be done that way. It would be less difficult. Okay. This whole process could have been done in reverse, upside down. Okay. You've installed your lower cowl first and you'll install your upper cowl second. Both work, providing that you've used your engine to dictate to the position of the cowling. Uh, you've taken a little bit of a risk by not having done that, but I don't think it's that big of a risk. The cows are cut in this surface here um, so that they follow the, the firewall while this is touching the back of the spar. And I think that, that it's close enough where you'll be able to get your engine to fit. Now you've mentioned earlier that because of the proximity of the exhaust to the exhaust holes in the cow, that there may be some repair and tuning needed there. Well, you know, I, would, I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even bother with trying to to run your aircraft with these standard holes and positions. First thing that I would do with the after the installation of the cowlings and your engine and the exhaust pipes is looking into this opening. You can, you can tell where the, the exhaust pipes are close to the cowls. If they're any closer than a quarter of an inch, you just guesstimate around this opening and just cut this out above and below. Fish mouth it back. And take a cardboard tube that is larger in diameter than what this would be here, out about to here or so. 
and slide it over your exhaust pipe. Silver tape on the exterior of the cardboard tube. These areas are prepared for bonding and lay up three plies of bid, or two plies of bid, I'm sorry, on the exterior over this cardboard tube. What that does is it positions this opening equidistant around that tube. This was done on Stan, Stan Snyderman's airplane and is the only one that I know of that has not burned his cowls close to the exhaust pipes. Those, those exhaust pipes go red hot during operation and the only thing that keeps them from really burning is that quarter inch or so gap plus airflow, cooling airflow that escapes from the lower cowl around the exhaust pipe. The, uh, after you've laid up the two plies and it's solidified, you've pulled your tube off, you've dropped your cowl, and then you lay up a one ply bed layer on the inside also to prevent peel. That brings you back to the three plies that you were. You might want to lay up a, an extra two plies right at the outside edge so that this edge is stiff and doesn't have a tendency to crack. And that's bid as well? Yeah. Now I'm going to add two here this particular point, that the glass on this section here, the four plies were bonded to the lower section and lapped up onto the upper section that had been silver taped. And then as soon as it solidifies, you drill one, two, three, if you're going to use a full extension, or two holes if you're going to use if you're going to cut it off for your cam locks. And those holes will be centered on the tab. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a logical situation knowing where the, you don't want the hole to be right next to the edge because it would tear out. And you don't want it right next to, all the way up here because it would be near the edge of the tab and it would tear out of the tab. So you center it on the tab and center it on the glass. How fat are those tabs? Are those four inch tabs too? They're, no, they're, they're three. They're an inch and a half lapping under the cowl and an inch and a half lapping up onto the area from the unbonded section. Now these cowls have got the stiffener in it already. Would you be doing all of this with the stiffener in or with the stiffener out? Oh, the, the cowls come with stiffeners in. Is that true for all the makers? All the makers. I, I, I think we received some cows. I don't know what sport flight that. You, they shipped you, a cow that that in the crate the stiffeners had released. But it looked like that the the um, the vendor installed the stiffener on an unsanded cowl with flocks and uh, unsanded it popped off in shipping. But the cowls and the stiffeners were undamaged. We sanded the flocks off and uh, reinstalled having sanded the cowl and there was no further problem. This particular stiffener is about four times as wide as the one from Task Research and has had no tendency to crack or break like the Task Research ones have had. In the uh, plans there, there's some sort of diagram that shows stiffeners running fore aft about four or five inches in from the from That's the for lane. a very easy cowl. A very easy cowl is much, much longer that came out here. And when you trim a very this easy... This isn't a long, easy plan. So is that just a mistake? They, well, that's because they, the very easy cowl could have been used. It's shorter by an inch, so you have to, to extend the tabs here when you attach the cowl. I see. But when you cut that off, you, the extra two plies they've added to the end of the cowl for a very easy are no longer here. And you need to stiffen the cowl for cam lock or screw loads along this edge. I see. So that's, that's a very easy cowl. Yeah. I see. By the time you've reached this stage, and we're not talking about just installing cowl to the turtle deck area that we talked about before, we're talking about installing to the spar, to the end of the wing. If you're at this stage, you can also go on to gap seals. Mr. Cobb here has prepared his wing. He has sanded the upper and forward surface for approximately an inch and a half on the vertical to this, trend, to this edge and about an inch to inch and a half out on this surface. Those surfaces are prepared for bonding. He'll take his foam, it's been cut to fit very closely into this gap. Is the surface still in here? Mm -hmm. um, micro on this surface, slurry. That's the forward surface. Yep, forward surface on it. Pushed in place, and then leveled between the two surfaces. Just push it down and on and on. Make sure that it's very close all the way along. At this stage, I run uh, micro on this side of the hole. Actually, it can go on both sides. It really doesn't matter. And I want, lay one. And I have foam in here as well as in here. This surface has been sanded where the knuckles are, the aluminum plates. And this has been sanded here. And I'll fill micro across this knuckle. Not, not pushing too much in, but enough to fill the gap. And I lay up one ply bit tape 
across this surface, lapping under the silver tape and lapping it approximately an inch onto the spar, all the way to here. This tab can be sanded, four ply tab here, it becomes a five ply, and the glass can be laid up right on top of the tab. Otherwise, you end up with a, with a surface here that wants to crack after you've painted. After it solidifies, or after it actually reaches the tack stage, I'll cover this area with dry micro. Right on top of the silver tape, right out under the wing. And when it solidifies, I'll take my sure form and I'll grind down to a fair surface. The, uh, the silver tape is, is here to prevent me from bonding to the wing surface. After it has been sanded, I'll pop this wing free and we'll be able to tell exactly where we want our, our glass on the gap seal to end. And I'll far sand this glass right up to the, t to the point where I'm touching the foam. This will put that gap seal directly above the vertical face of the shoe web on the wing. Now I'm going to reverse the process. I'm going to silver tape, I'm going to uh, excuse me. I'm not going to reverse the process. I'm going to finalize the foam and the rest of the gap seal. I'll do that by beveling off the foam. And I'll show you the foam as though it's actually going to be doing. I'll take another piece. The foam sitting in, in this fashion will have glass running from this edge forward onto the spar. From this edge, I want to bevel back to the spar face at about 45 degrees. So it'll look like this from the end. Glass will run from this surface onto the face of the spar and down approximately a half an inch. This edge here, already having been glassed, I need to do a flux corner on it, so about a quarter inch flux corner. So the glass will run from here, across the foam surface, and down onto the spar. Now we'll, we'll assume that we finished this area. It's been glassed, it's been sanded up to the foam, and the foam has been beveled off at a 45 and we put a little flux corner along the top edge and lap our glass onto the face of the spar. Once it solidifies, I again sand that edge, get that gap seal edge absolutely true and straight. Now I'm going to silver tape the gap seal, the forward face of the gap seal, and wrap the silver tape up on top of the gap seal and onto the spar. Then I'm going to remo have re already removed the silver tape from the forward surface of the wing, sand it, put my wing back in place, paint a thin coat of epoxy onto the leading edge and fill with dry micro up against the edge of the gap seal, trying to push a little below. What I want to do is create, go from a round surface here to a square surface that matches perfectly against the gap seal. From here on out, it's going to be a matter of, of filling across the top of this gap seal and breaking the gap open again, reestablishing the surface and, keeping, and, and cleaning up the edges as you go. This becomes a rather frustrating section, and there's not too many ways that I can think of it to avoid that. But if you want nice straight lines and surfaces and all the surfaces that tie in, it's a process you have to go through. All right, well, thanks for doing that. Um, it would seem that we've talked about the outside of the cooling system and this little bit of uh, gap seal. Uh, what we should really talk about is how you cool the rest of it. In other words, how you actually finalize the cooling system with bathing and oil cooler and so forth. Why don't we move and do that kind of thing uh, on another airplane or another uh, location and talk at length on that. What I might do at this point, I think I'll bring a set of baffles to the Squadron 2 meeting and uh, show the baffles and talk about the differences. It's a very complex subject. Okay. I don't think I have sufficient materials here to, to, uh, to talk about it accurately, but I'll take the set with me. All right, that sounds like a good Thank idea. Thank you very much. And that's the scoop on cowls.